All right, hello again. We're going to get started now in radian measure. Last time we talked about regular uh, just angles in general, and we did a little bit about degrees. Now we're going to talk about the radian measure, which uh, I'm a, a much bigger fan of than the, the kind of arbitrary just divide a whole circle up into 360 here. We're going to actually base it on some, uh, uh, actually base it on pi itself, and so it kind of works out to be a lot nicer. So uh, if you look here at this picture, you can see we, uh, we're we talking about what is called a central angle. Um, this is an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. And uh, you see we can have the initial side again lying along the uh, x-axis, where the x-axis would be. That would be right here, our initial side. And then we're rotating over to a terminal side here in this right there. And then our angle there is in theta. And so the idea of what we can do is we can actually kind of divide this up to get radians based on how far our central angle took us around the circle. So you see here we have this intercepted arc right here, this here. Well, that's going to be some, uh, that doesn't look very good. Let me pick the other blue. This is going to be some fraction of the entire way around the circumference of the circle. And uh, we can even apply this out to larger circles. So if you had a, uh, a circle out here that was even larger, uh, we would end up, if we did the same angle, we'd end up going around about the same, uh, not about the same, we'd, we'd end up going around the same ratio of the whole circle. So if we extended this out, and we extended our initial side out, uh, then we would actually do the same fraction of the full way around that circle as well, because all circles are uh, are similar circles. They're all the same uh, as far as like they're just scaled versions of each other. And so we can have that and kind of take advantage of that idea to start looking at kind of like fractions of how far around a circle we want. We went, and we're going to end up picking a very specific circle uh, in order to make this work very well. And then you just extend your lines out, and it and it tells you how, what fraction of any circle you went around in, no matter what size that they are. Uh, the radian measure of a central angle that intercepts an arc of length, so sometimes called the arc length, uh, s, which is the variable we typically use for it, on a circle of radius r is given by theta, the angle in radians, equals the arc length over top of the radius of the circle. And keep in mind, this formula only works in radians. If you use this in degrees, you are likely to get it wrong. So this only works in radians. OK? And uh, Basically, that allows us to kind of define things a little, a little, in a little bit nicer of a way, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit when we look at the unit circle. So what relationship allows us to convert between radians and degrees? I mean, they're both telling us angle measurements. Uh, and basically, if you go uh, halfway around the circle, which would be 180 degrees, that's going to be what is called pi, pi radians. And see, uh, you're familiar with pi. You should have heard of it before. And so that gives that to us right there, OK? And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and take advantage of that, because whenever you want to convert units, you ultimately want to multiply by the number 1. And so we're going to take advantage of this. We're going to multiply either by 180 degrees over pi radians, or we're going to multiply by pi radians over 180 degrees, uh, depending on which way we want to go if we're converting radians to degrees, we're going to use this one, All right? That's radians to degrees. And if we're going degrees to radians, I'm just going to write rad from now on, uh, we're going to use that one. And this is OK, because ultimately, whenever you want to convert, you just want to multiply by the number 1. And since 180 degrees, 180 degrees is pi radians. I mean, I can even just rewrite this as pi radians over pi radians, which is just the number one. And then you can do the same thing for the other one if you wanted as well. Um, you could replace pi radians with 180 degrees, and you'd have 180 degrees over 180 degrees, and it works out to just be one. So 
Uh, whatever it is, it equals 1, so it's just going to change how our number looks, but not actually change what number we have. So let's try a few little examples with that. Let's start with 30 degrees. And so we're going to convert from degrees to radians. So 30 degrees, we're going to want to put, because we're wanting to cancel out that degrees, we're going to put the 180 degrees on the bottom and put the pi radians on the top. Basically, you want to put whatever you're converting from on the bottom and whatever you're converting to on the top, because now our degrees will cancel with our degrees and we'll end up with uh, 30 over 180 times pi radians and 30 over 180 that just reduces down to 1 sixth pi radians or sometimes just written as pi over 6 radians all right and so there's that one uh, we can try this one negative 225 negative 225 degrees and again we're going to put our degrees 180 degrees on the bottom that's what we're trying to get rid of and we're trying to convert two radians so we'll put that on the top degrees cancel with degrees and you end up with negative 15 over 12 uh, pi radians which we can keep reducing down to negative 5 fourths uh, pi radians okay so there's two of them done for you. I'm going to leave the last few for you to just go ahead and try. Um, <clears throat> and again, after I finish this, I'll probably go ahead and uh, do them uh, so that you can find them in the online backed up notes to check your answers with. Okay, but try them yourself first. All right, now let's try these. This is converting the other way. So here we want to convert radians, pi over 3 radians into degrees so we want to get rid of radians so they're going to go on the bottom so pi radians on the bottom and 180 degrees on the top the radians will cancel this time and they're leaving us with just that degree there and so we end up with the pi's canceling and we end up with 180 over 3 which uh, is going to just go down to 60 degrees I forgot my degree symbol up there all right, so nothing too horrible here. And then we'll try this last one here, negative 3 pi over 4 radians. And again, we're getting rid of radians, so we'll put pi radians in the denominator and 180 degrees in the numerator. The radian cancels with the radian. The pi cancels with that pi. And we end up with, uh, when all said and done, you do 180 divided by 4 and you should get what? Uh, so if we divide 18 by it, we get uh, we get 40, and then for 100, and, I'm sorry, for 160, we get 40, and then we have another uh, we have another uh, five for going into the last 20, and then times three, so 45 times three is negative 135 uh, degrees, is what we're going to end up having there. Uh, I might go ahead and, uh, no, I'm going to leave those last two for you to do, uh, but I'll make sure they show up in the notes uh, online for you, okay? I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to make another video because I'm getting ready to talk about the unit circle, and that'll be up next, so...